Hey everybody, welcome to episode 7, I think, of Art Club Quarantine Edition. I've been here for a while now. We're on day 50. Crazy. So today's word of the day, alien. It's a mouthful. Uh, that means words that are multisyllabic, so like alien. That's a lot of syllables. Or anything that's long-winded, so things that are just super wordy. So that's our word of the day, but let's get to all the good stuff. What we are working on today is ceramics. We're going to do something fun. Um, I am going to make a food dish for my cat Lapis. And it's going to be this wonderful skull because my cat is a destroyer. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, so I think this will be kind of a fun challenge for me. I've never sculpted a skull like this before, a realistic, like anatomically kind of correct one. Um, so I'm just going to put my sketchbook kind of back here as a reference. I did get started a little bit already, so I just made a pinch pot to get started with. So this will be the main section of the skull. And one thing to note is I made it kind of sloping. Oops. And then I put a big dent in it with my fingers. <laughs> I made it kind of sloping backwards just a little bit to kind of help us get the slope of the skull as I'm working. Um, I'm probably going to go in and smooth all the bumps and stuff out of this later when the clay is a little more uh, dry. I can use a knife to do that or a rib. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some clay and I'm going to build the face of the skull. So I got lot of clay here to work with. That's probably more than I need, but we're just going to kind of flatten it down just a little bit. So pardon all the super loud noises. Be prepared. I always scare my students when I do this at school. Just like out of the blue, start slamming things on the table. And they're like, oh no, what are you doing? You're so scary. <laughs> Sorry. It's just how I roll. All right. Um... Yeah, I think the hardest thing when we're working with ceramics is just understanding how to translate something from like a drawing into something three-dimensional. I think that's my biggest challenge. I'm getting better at it. It's really just a lot of practice. So I feel like that should be good. So what I'm going to do here is gonna make a couple marks on the clay where I want to cut this down just a little bit. I'm not entirely sure um, how this is gonna work if I'm going about this the right way or not. I don't know if there really is a right way per se but I guess if I want to say the most efficient way. <laughs> uh, just kind of bounce around. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, now I got a block <laughs> to work with. How do I want to do this? Maybe I'll just start rounding it a little bit. Yeah, and I realize that this is super thick and I know I'm not going to want it to stay this thick. However, I think I'll probably be you know, kind of carving into it and pressing into it kind of to create the skull shape. So I think I'm going to just kind of start 
turning this into the front face of the skull. I'm going to make my best attempt to stay in the frame as I'm doing this. So it's harder with three-dimensional stuff because I move around with it a lot. <laughs> um, okay. I'm falling off my chair. That probably isn't helping any. Okay, let's see here. So first off, we've got kind of, I want to think about it from all of the angles. Thinking about maybe like what areas are protruding and what areas are kind of receding as we're creating this area. just a little bit more to start creating the jawline. And then I'm, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to like build the cheekbones out um, since there's that bone that kind of like arches across. So yeah. I feel like I just have kind of a lumpy pillow shape at the moment. <laughs> Not super exciting, but hopefully it will soon be more exciting. I'm probably going to end up uh, carving away a lot of this. So what I think is going to be most helpful for me at this juncture is to probably attach my pieces of clay together here. That way I can just start kind of carving more. Noticing I've got more of a curve on one side than the other, so I need to fix that before I attach. sure I have the skull kind of at the right angle. Kind of the highest point will be where I want to attach things. All right, so from here, I have what was really good slip and then I kind of forgot about it. So it's a little chunky. I just had to add some more water to it. Alrighty. So I'm going to score, slip, and smear to attach my pieces together. Um, for those of you that don't do a lot of ceramics, the reason why we do this, it's basically um, because your clay shrinks as it dries. So if you don't like weld the pieces together really thoroughly and like kind of make them become one solid piece of clay um, as it dries they're going to shrink and just like pull apart and then your stuff will just fall apart and that's not very fun um, especially if you spend a really long time making something so uh, we try to avoid that by scoring the clay which is what I'm doing right now um, so I like to think that scoring makes it rough like Velcro so that it sticks together better. And then we add slip, which is like glue basically, it's watered down clay. And then we smear it together to join the pieces into one solid piece of clay. So I'm just gonna kind of smush it together. I can worry about how well I smeared things together later, but this will do for now. We want them to become one piece of clay instead of two.
then I think I'm gonna start smearing this over. It feels like this is really thick, so I have a feeling I'm gonna have to cut this down quite a bit. this now it's definitely thicker at the top than I want it to be I want it to be a little more uh, <laughs> a little more flush with the skull itself and my other cat doodle has just joined my studio behind me if you can hear the crinkling he's found a nice plastic bag he doesn't get a school a, a cool skull dish he gets a garbage dish. If anyone uh, has any ideas as to how I could make a food dish look like a trash can, I was sketching it out but it just looks so silly when it's really short. And the only problem is that it has to be kind of tall in order to uh, like read as a garbage can. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not sketching it right. I'm gonna keep working on it. Then that will be another live stream making the garbage can cat food dish. Alright, I'm just gonna cut away at a bunch of this here. Scoop it out. I think that will help a bit. Yeah, so as you can see here, I don't know, I'm just kind of smoothing out the head. I know for a fact this is going to take me quite a bit longer than an hour to make this actually look like a skull. So we'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna carve away a little bit more here. I'll probably end up adding more clay on as I get to the nose piece. gonna start shaping in some of the eye sockets here. I'll probably use my wire loop tool to carve in a little deeper, but this will at least just help me start to get some of the placement. So you can see I'm starting to kind of get the skull shape in here. I want to try not to pick my bowl up too much because then I make it wonky. But what I think I need to do is start to um, kind of add some clay underneath it. So what I think I'm going to do is just flip this over here and then I'm going to squish in a little coil of clay in here to one to give it a little more uh, um, support and then two I think it's also going to help with the shape of the skull itself. I'm going to cut out some of this. There's a little too much clay at the teeth area.
So yeah, down towards the bottom, it needs to be a bit thinner. Up at the top, it needs to be a little thicker. So I'm going to add some scoring and some slipping in here. I'll do the same to this little wad of clay that I've got. I'm not super worried about it being too thick at this point. So usually I don't like to make thick objects um, because they take forever to dry, but also if you put them in the kiln before they are too dry or before they're completely dry, they tend to explode. And that's bad news. Because not only does your artwork explode, it usually takes out everything else around it. Which is bad news. Um, so but like I said, I'm not that worried about it right now because I don't really have a, access to a kiln at the moment, so I don't know when I'm actually going to get around to firing this. So it'll probably just be sitting at my house drying for a really long time. And then eventually I will get around to it. Okay, and then... Since I'm kind of having a hard time smearing that on, I'm going to use a modeling tool to help me. So basically, modeling tools are like an extension of your hand. So whenever you can't really reach something, or maybe your finger just isn't right, the right shape for something, this uh, usually helps you. I realize that like behind the teeth in the skull there is a bit more going on there anatomically but for these intents and purposes I don't think it matters because no one's gonna be looking at the upside down of this because it'll be on the floor where my cat eats <laughs> uh, so you know it doesn't need to be fancy underneath Just gonna keep kind of changing the shape of that and we're gonna flip it back over here we go Another thing is if you have extra clay like I do and you don't want it to dry out, you want to keep it wrapped up. Otherwise, it becomes pretty useless. Okay, so how do I want to do this? I'm starting to work on the shape of the skull itself. So I'm just going to kind of block out where I want everything to be and then there are going to be some areas where I need to add clay and some areas where I need to carve away and subtract clay. So I'm probably going to have to add some more on to create kind of the bridge of the nose and also the brow bone just a little bit.
kind of shaping the cheekbones right now. kind of rounding out where the teeth kind of wrap around just a little. So let's see if I can flip here so we can see just a little bit more. So I am working on kind of creating the roundness of this lower area here where it kind of separates from the cheekbones. So just kind of playing with that shape a little bit. I'll probably be going in with a my needle tool and some wire loop tools to kind of carve around in this just a little bit more. Um, yeah, if only I were in my classroom right now, I could be looking at like a skull. <laughs> it would be so much more helpful to have like a three-dimensional reference to look at. Unfortunately, all I have is a drawing that I did for multiple angles, which I mean, at least having multiple angles is going to be helpful, but not super helpful in terms of like understanding the depth of the structures and everything so I kind of am flying a little blind in that respect so how do I want to work with this there's so many ways we could. Okay. Alright, now I think I'm going to kind of carve the eyes out a little bit. So I've got a smaller wire loop tool. Carve these in pretty flat, I think. Because I'd like to get the overhang of the brow over the eye socket. So not only is the depth going to look nice, it's also going to be beneficial for the clay so that it's less thick. Because I'm thinning it out by hollowing it out more. we have that kind of filled out I can work on smoothing it a little bit and then shaping the brow, the orbital, the zygomatic arch. It's like the bone around your cheekbone. Yeah. I remember some things from my art anatomy lessons. See now the question that I have with myself is how realistic do I want this to be? I think that is going to be really important to figure out because right now I look a little cartoony and I do kind of like that but do I want it to be really realistic? I don't know. I'm going to add a little 
more clay right over the nose area. Get a little slip. Let's stick that on. Just kind of smear it on so that it gets welded in there. too much slip in there, but that's okay. Maybe I can just come back and keep shaping that. So I'll lift it up so y'all can see a little bit more. We're starting to get some good shape here as we're working. So I think I'm gonna hollow out the other eye. Now, my hands are all slimy now. I got a little too excited with that slip. <laughs> I think one of my favorite things about drawing skulls, I don't know, I love skulls. Skulls are cool. Um, I like to draw cartoony ones where... Uh, one of the eye sockets is bigger than the other. I just feel like they have that special little derpiness to them. And when you add that, it gives them a little more character. I'm not sure if I want to do that on this one. Because again, I'm still stuck on to whether I want it to be cartoony or if I want it to be like anatomically correct. It's pretty difficult. I'm also terrible at making decisions. I'm like the most indecisive person in the world. Oh yes, that is nice. starting to look pretty nice. I'm feeling good about it. Now I think I'm going to start uh, adding a little more depth into the nasal cavity and then I think I will probably end up adding a little more clay around these edges of it. Just a little bit. This space is getting a little tight to carve into, um, so it's a little awkward, but I think it's it's working. All right, I think that should do. So now I'm just gonna go around and kind of clean things up a little bit more and stick on a little bit more of the sides of the nostril here. It's kind of the hardest thing for me is just knowing like without seeing it three-dimensionally just looking at my drawing how far does it stick out? I'm not entirely sure. Are my fingers small enough to fit in here? Have y'all like seen the diagrams of where the swabs go when you get tested for COVID? Cause uh, <laughs> it's like way in the back of your brain. I don't know. I think that's kind of the same as like the test for whooping cough, which I have had done before, and it is like the most 
invasive, like, horrific feeling. Like, it literally goes into your brain. It, it is so far back in your skull. It is really, really unpleasant. Uh, I just remember, like, feeling so, like, violated afterwards, because it was just so intense. I was, like, crying. It was really bad. <laughs> so, you know, stay safe. Wear a mask. Don't get infected with things. Because you don't want that test. It is not fun. Alright, so I'm using my modeling tool right now to kind of help shape the nasal cavity. And it's, you know, kind of doing the job. It's kind of also making a mess, so... <laughs> um. tilt up again. So as you can see I'm starting to create sort of the shape of the nasal cavity. Kind of working on building it outwards accurately. I'm enjoying this. I feel like this is going to be the most hardcore cat food dish <laughs> in the world. Oh, I really like what happened here. I wonder if I am able to replicate that. I think that's starting to look pretty cool. So what's probably going to happen is I'm going to be like carving in more like the cracks and more fine details as the bowl starts to get a little harder because right now it's still quite plastic so it's very soft um, and that is not in my opinion very conducive to adding detail. It's good for it's the sculpting portion, but I like my clay to be a little more leather hard when I start adding in the details. Alright, um, so there's like a little divot that kind of comes in here. If that's exactly what I was intending. We'll find out. I can always fix it later. Uh -oh. Hmm. What's going on with my shapes here? I really like how this one kind of jumps down just a little bit. How can I make them work together?
boy, now that I'm looking at this from the side, I don't know, maybe I want to take out some of the stuff I added in there and kind of squish this back. Am I going to paint this? Um, what I Since I'm going to be putting cat food in it, um, I'm going to glaze it so that it's food safe because, you know, don't want to poison my kitten. That would be sad. He's too fancy for that. Now that I'm looking at it from the side, I see I need to kind of play around with this nasal cavity. Ooh, now I don't like that. What did I do? Ah, ah. My drawing is so different from real life. Oh, I just ruined this. <laughs> well, what can I do to... <laughs> Bring this back. Oh, jeez. I made a poor decision, everyone. Now I gotta fix it. That is something. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get a little bit more of the shape here. It needs to be more in the center. See, it looks great from the front, but then when I turn it to the side, I'm not really feeling it anymore. It, it needs something. Do I want to make teeth or do I want to make cheekbones? This is difficult. So many decisions. Maybe I should probably make the teeth because this is starting to stiffen up a bit. So one thing that's important when you're working with ceramics or really any sort of three-dimensional media is you want to look at it from multiple angles. So yeah, when I look at it from the side, I am not feeling it at all. <laughs> it's making me sad. Uh, so what needs to happen for this to feel good? What do we need to do here? I think I need to get rid of some of this stuff. 
I put too much there. So we'll just perform a little liposuction, if you will, a little, a little nip and tuck. I always think about Clay as performing surgery for some reason. I guess I probably could use a scalpel for some of these things. There we go. Okay. Now, I wonder if I can just squish this together. Bring it back. Let's find out. my modeling tool to squish it back together. Yeah, it's just like plastic surgery. Just cut out what you don't want, squish it back together. If only it were that easy. <laughs> You notice how your face always itches when your hands are dirty? It's like when you're washing the dishes. It just always happens to me. The worst. Now I wonder if I can maybe add a little bit more onto the side of the mouth. Let's find out. I guess I should probably look at it this way. Is it better? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's getting much better. Okay. And I just need to, like, change the angle. Get it squished. <laughs> ah, I love it. Okay. That's feeling pretty good. Oh, that looks much better. So if we turn it this way, you can kind of see the angle here. Ah, I'm feeling better about this now. Okay. I can just squish the face in a little bit more. We want to have that nice angle that the teeth are coming out at. And I just need to kind of reshape some of the face. There we go. Oh, that's better. All right. So what was I saying? We we're gonna add on to the teeth just a little bit. So I'm gonna turn this back upside down. So we'll take a look. Oh, it's coming along. Oh no. How am I going to fix this? I ripped it open again. Smush it together. There. It's like nothing ever happened. Okay, so what I'm noticing is like the cheekbones kind of like come out and then over here, like on either side, but then the teeth kind of wrap around just a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is just make a little more teeth. Just add an extra little piece there. I can smooth it and carve it and do all that jazz later, I guess. We'll just add it in. <laughs> but I don't want it to be too thick, so I feel like I need to add it 
more back here and then just kind of smooth it over. So I'm going to score up my sides nice and good. Smush it on and then smear it so that it becomes one piece. Just rotate here. There we go. Oh, that's starting to feel better now. Just going to kind of carve into this just a little and cut away just a bit. shape this down until it's kind of at the right shape for me. Oh, that's so much better. Okay, cool. So now comes the fun challenge of doing the same thing on the other side. <laughs> oh. I've always got a difficult. Okay, so what did I do? I had kind of a triangular little wad of clay here. That's not bad. Okay, so we'll score and slip and smear again. Smush that on. Alright. There we go. Now what did I do on the other side? Okay. That's always kind of the other kicker is remembering how I did what I did. kind of nubby. Can I pull enough over to make it even? Maybe they're just missing a tooth. You never know.
Here we go. Get some of that cheekbone happening here. Get a little bit more of that depth between them. I really like to use my needle tool as a carving tool and a smoothing tool. Basically, I feel like I can do almost everything with just a needle tool. It's the most versatile. Hey, there we go. All right. Now we'll flip it back over. Welcome back, buddy. I should name this little skeleton. You look so much better now that you have a full row for some teeth. I'm gonna talk to him like I talk to my cats. Oh, don't you look better? Get so nice. Oh boy. How do we wanna do the teeth? I should look at him. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, that's good. Now it's starting to get cheekbones. You wanna see these cheekbones? Look at these cheekbones. Oh, so protruding. <laughs> Okay, how do I want to make these teeth? I guess I can just start to kind of carve in and then I will probably use my needle tool as a carving tool to give them some depth. Is that even in the middle? not too bad. So basically what I'm gonna do is just kind of slowly start shaping the teeth with my needle tool but I think my clay is just a little too soft still for that to do it cleanly at least. Uh, so yeah I think I'm just gonna have to wait do this. I can just kind of get the bottoms cut out a little though. Ooh, what if I made the teeth like my teeth and gave them a gap in the middle? <gasps> then it'd be like Lapis is eating out of my skull. That's definitely gonna happen. He would eat me. <laughs> oh good, oh good, yes, gap tooth skull. I think I made some of these teeth a little skinny, so I'm gonna widen them out a little. I guess that's a benefit of this being a little 
smaller or softer. So there we go. That's better. Alright. There we go. <laughs> this is gonna be awesome when it's done. It's probably gonna be a long time until it's done. Cause like I said, I don't know when I will be able to fire this. But we will hope sometime soon. All right, y'all, it's been an hour. Here is a cat food dish for Lapis, extra morbid. <laughs> uh, I'll definitely be putting in probably another hour or two worth of work into this to get the nice cheekbones coming out the side and cleaning up the teeth and all that good stuff. But yeah, I'm feeling pretty proud about this. I think it's looking good. Not bad for my first time sculpting a more anatomically correct skull. So, yeah. We'll catch you next week. Thanks for watching. Keep creating. We'll see you later.